Hey y'all, what's going on? It's me. It is July 2nd, 2022. I did the original version of this video on June 30th, 2022, just two days ago. Um, but I didn't like the beginning. It was very slow going. And I think that by the time you got to the good part, um, you would have just been bored. <laughs> to be frankly honest. So, um, this video is about faith. The Lord has been putting on my heart for about two weeks to do this, and it's time to step up and do it. And when I think of faith and great faith, I think of David and Goliath. And even though I'm sure that you've read the story of David and Goliath many times before, um, I have a little bit more input um, to give. I broke down Goliath and... Um, and all the details of that. So let's um, let's first pray, and then we'll go from there. Heavenly Father, let this video be good and pleasing to your eyes, Lord. Help me to not be a perfectionist. Jesus, in your mighty name. Um, let everything that comes out of my mouth be flowing from you, Lord. Not from my own knowledge, not from my own wisdom, but from you. From your knowledge, from your wisdom, from your lips, Lord. So that I may speak the message that I ought to speak that you have for me. And you have for these people to hear. Thank you, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. So if you could take your Bibles, these things, the pages to read <laughs> or devices if you have if you choose a device first Samuel chapter 16 now I'm gonna jump around a little bit I'm not gonna stay in the same place I'm not gonna read the whole thing um, so I'll give you the scripture of where I am before I start reading so that way you can follow with me Okay, I'm starting with chapter 16, going all the way down to verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now going to verse 12. And he sent and brought him in, David. Now he was ruddy and withal, of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Going on to 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Um, chapter 17, for Samuel 17, verse 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. He had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spears had weight, his spears had weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him so let's break this down i went online and i did the conversion from brass to pounds and i did the conversion of what was um the length the the uh, height of goliath six cubits and a span 
is 12 feet 1 inch. So imagine a basketball player that's like 7 feet 4 inches. That, that's pretty huge. That's, that's, you know, that's like a really tall basketball player. Goliath um, was 12 feet. 12 feet, most, most probably higher than some of our ceilings. And his coat of chain mail that he wore was 125 pounds. Just the coat, not counting the sheaves of brass on his legs and between his shoulder blades. And the spearhead, just the head of the spear, weighed 15 pounds. If you want, you can go over the measurements, look it up like I did. I made sure everything was correct before going on video. So his spearhead weighed 15 pounds. And all the men of Israel were afraid because Goliath looked huge. And I'm sure that not only was he, he tall in height, 12 feet, one inch, but I'm sure he was a bigger guy, more muscles, stronger, bigger, bigger hands, bigger everything, because you can't imagine, you know, somebody that is like six feet tall in the same body as somebody that'd be 12 feet tall. Everything else would be bigger. Go to verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Faith. Who should defy the armies of the living God? I love how David's faith is so strong. And what I'm about to read next, I'm going to go to verse 33 to 37. And this testing that I'm about to read later became a testimony for David. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Um, this, this champion, this, this, you know, he didn't just learn last week, last year to fight. He's been fighting since his youth and they're calling him a champion for a reason, assuming that he never loses. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. So thy servant, David, slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So right now, Saul is doubting God, is doubting David, that David can be the person that God is looking for. See, I'm, I, I can't jump yet, I can't jump yet. Let's go to verse 42, this is getting interesting. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, 
He disdained him, for he was but a youth, and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, verse 43, I'm just going on. Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, to Goliath, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou, how, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and I will take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Oh, can you imagine being a youth, a youth, a kid? looking up at this giant, all the way up at this giant. In stature, he's big, he's strong, he's very tall. He's probably towering down, towering over David. And David stands there in front of him, telling him this in his face. That's the kind of faith that I wanna have. That is strong faith. That is big faith. And I love it. Okay, I'm just going to go to 48 and then, and then all the way down to like 53. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, David hasted and ran toward the enemy to meet the Philistine. He hasted. That means he didn't pause, he didn't freeze in fear. He ran towards him. Can you imagine? You have to have big faith to run towards a huge enemy. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine, and slew him, and there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, like over him, on top of him, and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Imagine the size of the sword that Goliath had. Now, I know that they made swords back then, probably each by hand. They didn't have factories like they do now. But they had to custom make Goliath a sword so Goliath could get a handle on it. He could grasp it and pick it up with one hand or both hands. Um, and David, a youth, with the power of God, grabbed that sword that big sword that Goliath had and chopped off Goliath's head. And what I love about this is that David ran. I'm going to say that again. I'm, I know I'm repeating myself, but he ran. He hastened. He hasted toward Goliath. He didn't freeze. He didn't tremble. He didn't sit there and look at him like this, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. His faith. Oh. God's favor was on him so much. 
God's favor was on David so much. They weren't looking for the strength of a champion. God was looking for the heart of a champion. Amen? Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm just getting so excited that even though Goliath was bigger, he was stronger, he had all this pounds of brass on him, that, that David won because of his faith. How great is that? And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley, to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way. I'm going to skip a little bit. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. They spoiled their tents with everything that they stole from the Philistines. I mean, so God not only gave favor to David for killing Goliath, but he gave favor over Israel against the rest of the Philistines. Amen? So God's favor today is as big and as strong as it was back in biblical times. We just have to have the faith to believe. That's how much faith David had in the Lord. Seeing nobody defies the army of the Lord. Nobody mocks and sneers God and gets away with it. David's faith makes me feel like I want to have that kind of faith. I have faith, but I'm not sure I have the David kind of faith that I need. Think about the storms in your life. Think about things that have happened. Have we had the faith of David walking through those storms? I know sometimes I haven't. But David knew God. And his faith served him well. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what Israel was, was walking by, their sight. Oh, Goliath is so big. He's so, he's such a brute. He's, he's huge. They're walking by sight, not by faith. So let's go to the next one. This is Galatians 2, verse 15. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. It's the inward observance, the inward appearance that God sees. It's the faith in us. It's the heart that we have for God and his people. Amen. The next one is Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. That believe promise by faith to them that believe. Um, and the Lord also wants me to let y'all know that 
and we've heard this many times. We've heard this many times, and I'm not sure exactly where this is in the Bible, because I didn't look it up beforehand. I should have. But um, God wants us, and I'm sure you've all heard this, God wants us to have faith like a mustard seed. A mustard seed is like, it's like, like a little peppercorn seed. A little peppercorn, it is so tiny and minute. Very, very tiny. Like, tinier than that, like that. All we have to have is faith as a mustard seed for the Lord to work in us. But God didn't say that it had to stay the size of a mustard seed. That that, mu that seed in our hearts from God, that seed of faith, can be big as it wants. We always say it has to be big as a mustard seed. But yeah, that's the starting point. But God wants to press into us that it can be big as we want. It can be huge. Our faith for God can be huge. All, all we need to start is just a little bit. But there's no cap. There's no top to that. You know? And make sure that we do it in service to the Lord, not in service to ourselves. Not to make ourselves feel better or bigger or higher or prouder. But do it unto the Lord. Amen? Okay. This next one is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted, and grounded in love. What does that mean to be rooted and grounded in love? That means that our foundation is rooted and grounded in God. And since we get all, all our love from God, or most of our love from God, amen, that we are to be rooted in that. We are to be steadfast in that. That we are to be like strong pillars. the squeakiness of my chair. That Christ may dwell in your hearts, in my heart, by faith, being rooted and grounded in love. Because if you're rooted with the Lord, if you're grounded with the Lord, when the wind comes, it won't be able to, to bend you that easily. You'll be rooted in the Lord. So when trials come, tribulations come, you'll have that faith to say, Lord, I might not know what's going on. The situation might look bleak, but by you, Lord God, I know that everything's going to be okay. Amen. I mean, we've all come through storms in our lives. We've all come through hard things. And we're still here, amen. Amen still here good job be proud of yourself for that okay and let me read um, Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 I'll do all the ones together that I can so I don't have to keep on flipping back and forth for grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God's grace, believing, repenting, and believing that Jesus died on the cross for us so we can go to heaven is wonderful. That's beautiful. But it's God's grace by what we do, not of our own. It's when I do these studies, God comes through me. Amen. It's not of my own lips. It's not of my own way. It's not of my own mind. It's I, I pray before every 
thing that the Lord wants me to do. Lord, let it this be your will. Let it be your way. Because if I try to do it in my way, that's not going to work. I don't want to do it my way. I honestly don't. Because then I know that I would mess it up. And I'd miss the mark. And with God, I don't want to miss the mark. Amen. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Which is Hebrews. Chapter 11. Verse 6 and then 11. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that seek God diligently. Not just, hey, what's up, God? What's going on? How you doing today? Okay, I'll talk to you again in about a week and a half. Who seek him diligently, not just seek his word, but you seek what he wants for your life. That the life we live is not our own. It's God. God has chosen to put us here for his reason and his purpose. Amen. It is not of our own will, of our own ways. We are here to please the Lord. And when you really come into the Lord and you please him, you will feel his amazing love like never before. God's amazing love is so worth it. It is so worth it. I love to hear at the end of the day or at the end of a study, job well done. Thank you, my daughter, I'm proud of you. Thank you for being obedient. Nothing pleases me more than to have the Lord be pleased by me, amen. Okay, let's hop over to verse 11 now. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Read that again. Through faith also Sarah Sarah was um, Abram's or Abraham's wife, later called Sarai. Sarah all received strength to conceive seed. So she was barren. She couldn't, she couldn't conceive a child on her own. But from God, she received strength. Amen. And was delivered of a child when she was past age that must have gotten her her menopause or whatever they called it, called it back then. She was past the age of having children. But she received strength from the Lord. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. She had judged God faithful. It's not like a bad judge. It's It's... God, you promised me this, and I know you're going to deliver. That's what she was saying. Okay. This next one is 1 John chapter 5. First epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is their victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. <clears throat> For whatsoever is born of God. We could be in the world for a long time, but then, we're, then when, we, when we become saved, excuse me, when we become saved, um, God overcometh us with his love. And we are no longer in the world. And this is a victory that overcometh the world, even 
our faith. Amen? I'm going to have to dig a little bit more into that one. Okay. Let's go now to, to John chapter 1, verse 12. Excuse me. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Believing and faith is pretty much the same thing. When you have faith, you're believing that God is going to fulfill what he promises that he's going to fulfill. It might not, not be the time you want him to fulfill it, because God is going to do everything in his season and in his timing. God's timing is always perfect. As humans, we do want things, and we want them in our timing, because we have a hard time being patient. But when the Lord says that he's going to do something, have faith that he's going to do it. Amen? Have faith in him. Don't waver. I myself have a hard time believing sometimes in the promises of God. God is growing me in that. Amen? So, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become sons of God. He gave us power to be, become sons and daughters of God. We could not do it on our own. We had to humble ourselves. But God gave us the, that power, amen? That believe on his name, that believe on God's name, that believe in God's goodness and God's mercy and God's wisdom, that believe in the Lord, believe in Christ, that Christ died on the cross for our sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to switch over to, uh, to John chapter 7. Verse 38. He that believeth on me, as scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. Whew. How do you not believe when reading everything that the Lord has confirmed for us? You know, this is not just a book to pick up and study and be done with it. It is, it is, it's like a love letter to us. It's, it's like God's outpouring of his heart to us. It's not just a book to throw around and pick up whenever you want. It's a book to cherish, not as in the physical, but in the words that are said. These are, are rules these are commandments. These are psalms given to us so that when times of trouble come, because God knows that times of trouble will eventually come, because we're human, we're flesh, for us to stand on his word. Again, like standing in that, the rooting of his word, standing on that strong foundation that we would believe and have faith and hope. This next one is Matthew I know this for you guys might be a little bit longer of a video for me but I know that the Lord really really wanted me to do this tonight Matthew 17 chapter 17 verse 20 and Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain as a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. 
Now I know that back in these times they saw a lot of miracles happen because of Jesus and I know it's hard to conceive that something like that can happen but that's why God wants you to believe that's how Daniel Daniel I keep up saying Daniel that's how David won the victory over Goliath because he had that faith and that faith made it possible for David to take out Goliath going over to Matthew chapter 21 verse 22 just a couple more left and then we're done and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing ye shall receive now you can say God I want a million dollars and pray about it every day but just because you ask doesn't mean you're going to receive it has to be in God's will for your life to receive um Short testimony. A long time ago, I was back in my parents' house. They had already separated, divorced, and I felt what was a dark cloud over the house. And I didn't know what that was, that that was called oppression back then. And I prayed to the Lord every day for years. Lord, I know that there's something beyond, beyond me, beyond this life. Something that you have for me, Lord, please, please, God, just get me out of this house. And even though I wasn't completely saved, because I didn't, I wasn't living the life. I knew there was a God, and I listened to um, a Christian radio station. I knew there was a God, and I felt Him in my heart, but I, I didn't change my life the way that I should have back then. But eventually, God did get me out of the house. And I know that I got out because of God. And because I wrote to um, Mrs. Laura Bush. <laughs> and I got a, a correspondence letter from somebody in her staff um, giving me agency names that would help me to to um, join so that I could get my own apartment. So I'm very, very proud of that. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Believing. In order to receive it, you got to believe it, and it's got to be in God's will. Okay, this is Mark chapter 11, verse 23. It's the same thing that I just read a couple moments ago. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, I, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. That gives me hope for my family to become saved. Thank you, Lord. That if I don't have doubt in my family, in my heart, praying my family will be saved. But whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Amen. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Let me go up. Sometimes you have to go up a scripture 
that scripture is great, but sometimes you have to go up a little bit or down a little bit to get the whole of what they're talking about. And yes, 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 yes. A woman came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood was gone, the stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude um, throng thee and press thee, and saith thou, Who touched me? Which means everybody around him is touching him. And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to, unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort, that thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And skip down to verse 52. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not. Jesus said, Weep not. She is not dead but sleepeth. And this goes right into the correlation of our Bible study tonight, um, 6-30-2022. We've been talking about she's not dead, but she sleepeth. So all of these promises of God, all of these beautiful promises of God in this beautiful Bible, in this beautiful book, God says, be of good cheer. Don't be downcast, downtrodden. Don't be full of fear in your worries, in your life. Don't always be looking for the negative, because if you're always looking for the negative, you will find it. If you're always fearful about something happening, it will happen. Bring your mind into a positive place into a positive place. If you are positive in your mind and in your heart and your actions and your and what you say in your thoughts, then you will see life as positive. But if you are negative, the negativity is all you're going to see. So thank you so much for spending time with me. I pray that a few people have watched this. I really, really pray. Um, I'm going to close in prayer. And I um, get to call my sis and tell her I'm done so we can go on to the next study. <laughs> oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for all your kind and beautiful words. Oh, that if we just have faith and believe that we will be made whole that we are whole and holy by your spirit, Lord. It's not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray that this video brings people into a new light, into a new hope with you, Lord. This video has strengthened the faith of the people that have watched it. Thank you, Jesus, in your mighty name. 
I know the people that need to see this will see it. Oh, Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And we thank you. And if anybody watching has not yet come to God, all you have to say is, God, I'm a sinner. Be humble in your heart. Repent for your sins. With a humble heart, repent. Say, God, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me, for my sins, for my pain, for my shame, for my persecution, for everything, Lord. If you said that prayer, you are now born again. You are new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 The old man is passed away. Behold, all things are new. You just said that prayer. Your heart is new again. Are new for the first time. Get into the word and read it. I suggest you start with Matthew. Learn about the, the first four gospels. Start with Matthew and continue on. So you learn more about Jesus. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. God bless y'all.